Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this video we're making a dungeon door. Now this video is aimed at beginners to intermediate, so you've got a good knowledge of the interface. I'll go through lots of the controls that I'm using, but I do go fairly fast. Do check out the links in the description and the playlist on this channel and my website, gabbit.co.uk, for more free courses aimed at complete beginners right through to advanced levels, with new content being added regularly. If you like what I do, then check out my detailed courses suitable for complete beginners, the Blender Character Creator, giving a detailed overview of how to make complex characters for games using a sculpting workflow. Also, learning to draw, creating game art, which teaches you to draw basic concept art, character references, and lots more for use in games, 3D programs, and so on. So let's get started with our dungeon door. The starting point of any project, and probably the most important point, would be to gather reference images. And this is my kind of reference board. I'm using the program PureRef, link in the description. And I'll take you through my thought process slightly. So I've grouped objects together, so things like the handle. Even though the handle is something quite small and insignificant, it's still a good idea to gather reference images for ideas for that part. The wood, I've only got a couple of images, but I know the look I'm looking for, and there are a couple of other images around with wood in, so I can get some ideas from those. I've got the stone surround, thinking about that, and the style of stone that I want. The door itself, and how that's going to be styled. Real images, as well as hand-drawn versions, such as this. It's important to get a mixture of the two because you don't want to end up copying these styles. You want to create your own and you need to have some sort of basis for that. Even down to the horns, as you can see here and the skulls on the top, you can see my final image here that I've put into the reference board for when I'm sculpting and building the object. So there's not absolutely masses there and my mood boards and reference boards tends to get much bigger than this. But for a quick tutorial piece, this worked just fine. Then with those references on another screen, I draw out some ideas. And the first drawing always ends up a little bit rubbish, like this one here, as you're kind of warming up to it. So assume that you're going to trash that one and push it to one side. This is often called thumbnailing, where you're just sketching out ideas and changing the shape. Try and be experimental with this. I had a really good idea of what I was looking for in the first place, so I didn't really do too many of these. But generally speaking, I'd do more than this. It is sometimes down to time constraints, so you've got to think about that and those types of limitations. But as many of these as you can do will certainly help. If you want to learn how to draw creating game art, then check out my Learning to Draw course, where we go through the different techniques that I'm using here. And there's lots of challenges to help you build up slowly, right from beginner to the sort of level I'm drawing here. One fun technique was using the warp tool, so I took the first drawing I did and then just warped it around the place, making it all distorted and weird and wonderful to give it some real style and character. And you can kind of see the simple progression that's going on here. I thought about whether I was going to do a sort of rocky surround as if it's a dungeon door in the side of a mountain, but I haven't put that into the final render yet. So sculpting complex objects like this that have several parts, it's always best to box model those parts first with a sort of low poly version, and then go across to the sculpting and start adding the details. You can actually do everything in sculpt mode, so you can pull things around and deform them into that shape that you want, but it is far easier to make a low poly version first and then start sculpting that. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So here's my sketch of the dungeon door. I can click and drag that and bring it in. And then with that selected, I can press Alt-R to remove any rotation and Alt-G to remove any grabbing or movement. It comes in as an empty, as you can see here. And you've got lots of options with that. If you go to the data properties just here, you can make it transparent with the opacity by ticking that and bringing the slider down and make it visible in only certain views. In this case, I'm going to line it up across the X axis like this. So R, X, 90 and G then Y and just move it backwards like this. That way I can sort of model it from the front and I'll go to orthographic view with one on my numpad or you can use the Cartesian coordinates up here and I'll model it from front view like this. Let's bring it up so it's above the ground, just around there. And let's start off with the default cube and just scale that into position and we'll start off with this brick wall around the edge here. From here, we can make most of these cubes. I'll go to wireframe up the top here, go into edit mode with tab and then vertex mode with one. So that's edit mode up here and vertex mode just there. And I can then box select the vertices. I can't just click on them because that might select the back one or the front one. You can see the back one isn't selected. So if I go to front view and press G to grab and start moving it around, it hasn't moved the back one. So I'll undo that. Always remember to box select like this. G to grab and just move these into position like this, somewhere around there. 
Okay, so that's our first cube. Let's just go into object mode and into solid mode and just see what that looks like from the side here as well. Might need to be a little bit wider, so S then Y, and we'll have sort of bricks that are a bit wide like this. S then Y is scaling on the Y axis. So back to front view, Shift D to duplicate, into edit mode, into wireframe mode, so we can start moving these around, and G to grab, and let's just move them into position. Object mode, Shift D to duplicate, edit mode, and then box select and start moving them into position once again. Now this one's a little bit more tricky, so we'll bring that to here. We'll select this bottom group of vertices here, E to extrude, pull it out, and move it into position. Now notice I'm overlapping the shapes. That's important because when you join all your shapes together and sculpt them, there won't be any gaps in between. Also, I'm not doing details like this. I'll save that for the sculpting. Okay, back into object mode, and we'll just keep copying these. So Shift D to duplicate, this one I rotate round slightly into edit mode and start moving these into position. Remember to overlap them slightly so it will work in sculpt mode. Now it's a little bit tough to see what's going on, so I'll go back into object mode, select my background and bring down the opacity so you can actually see my outline shapes. Hopefully you can see what's going on a bit better now. So I can select these objects, Shift D to duplicate and just keep going around, moving them into position. So it's always box select, G to grab and move them into place. Every now and again, you might want to select a whole group like this and E to extrude to pull them outwards. Okay, so there's my stone outline and you can see them all overlapping like this. I want a little bit more variation than that, so I'm gonna go through and just select a few and resize them in the Y, so S then Y. So there's a bit of variation there and just another few like this, S then Y, maybe bring those in a little bit and then we've got a bit more variety in our shape. I think it's a little bit too straight down here, so I'll probably just adapt that slightly. And I might just cut this in half with Control R. That does a loop cut all the way around, and then I can just sort of move this one slightly and see how it's going to look. So back to object mode, see how it's looking, and that's fine. I can always adapt the shape a little bit more later on. Let's create the stairway. For this one, I think it's slightly quicker to model as just one piece, so Shift A to add, mesh, and then cube. Put that into wireframe, into edit mode with tab, and let's just get the position of these. I'll just bring it forward. So I'll go to side view with three, bring that forwards and into edit mode again. Now this time I'll do a loop cut for the next set of stairs like this. Now the steps actually go in this way as well. So we'll need a loop cut this side and this side. So control R and control R. Then I can select this face in here. I can E to extrude and pull that upwards. I'll need the same thing for the next layer as well. So control R to do some loop cuts down there and control R to do loop cuts down here. Interface mode, select that face, E to extrude. Okay, let's see how that's looking. Let's go to front view first. So I'll need to bring this out slightly and this out slightly so I can box select those, G to grab, pull them outwards. I'm not too worried about this at the moment, but let's just check that's all right. That's not gonna make too much difference, that line moving there. And this one here, G to grab and pull that outwards. Again, it doesn't matter too much if the lines move slightly because we'll be sculpting all these things later. Let's go to vertex mode and start editing the shape a little bit. Okay, so we've got that really basic base. So I'm going to keep it nice and simple like that for the time being. We can add a lot of detail to this with the sculpt. You can go a bit further with your box modeling and break it up with some dents and all sorts, but we can sculpt those in as well. Okay, we need to do the door and the skull at the top. Let's go to solid mode, into front view. And I'll shift right click there, shift A to add and insert a cube, scale that down, scale in the Z, move that roughly into position and let's go back to wireframe mode and just move that so it becomes a sort of plank of wood. So I'll sculpt all these stones as one and I'll sculpt the base as one and the door as one object. So let's grab these, E to extrude, pull it outwards about there, one more there and another one there. Let's just move these into position. I've got to think a little bit about how it's overlapping the doors around there. I might have to modify that slightly. We'll see how we go. I'll do a couple of loop cuts to kind of give me some more vertices to play with and pull them into position. Okay, we've got these individual objects like a door handle here and these big bars going across here. And it's fairly easy to do that. I'll go back into object mode, shift right click on this metal support there, shift A to add and I'll just add in a plane. RX90 to rotate it around and I'll scale it down to the right size. Then into edit mode and I'll just start pulling these across into position. 
e to extrude, s to scale, e to extrude, s to scale, e to extrude, s to scale, e to extrude, and I might as well merge these with m at center. So it goes into a point. Let's just edit the shape slightly. I'm making it purposely wonky and disjointed because I think that adds a bit of character. I'll grab that one, Shift D and duplicate it up and then just modify the shape slightly. And there's our door supports. Now this door has a sort of look hole in it. So I will cut that into the door. So let's go back to the door. So into edit mode, I can do two loop cuts across here, Alt R and Alt R, just do a couple of those and move these into position. I don't want to get too close to this metal beam here, so I'll just bring that one up a little bit. I think that should be about right. Let's just see what that looks like. I'll just go into solid mode so you can see what's going on a bit more. It looks a little bit messy at the moment, and I don't need that loop cut across there anymore, so I can select that with Alt left click, into edge mode with 2, Alt X to dissolve. Okay, the wood for my door is a little bit wide, so let's go into object mode, scale in the Y axis, and bring it down to somewhere around there, so it's quite chunky wood. These are obviously flat, so we can add a modifier to those. So in the modifier panel, add modifier solidify. And let's bring up the thickness somewhere around there. That looks fine for the moment. I'll grab this one, shift select this one. So this is my active object and control L to link the modifiers together. So now this one has the same modifier as that one. That's looking good. G then Y and let's put it into the wood slightly somewhere around there. Now, when you start adding modifiers, you must make sure that your scale is set to one. So if I press N now and go to my item, you can see that the scale, it's uniform, but it's not set to one. So the thickness might be out slightly. What I'll do is I'll select all my objects there, except the background and press Control A to set the scale. You can see it's now one for that active object, but you can see also it disappeared. So let's just grab these both, G then Y and move them back. And that's because the thickness is correct now. Notice how it only changed for my active object there. So I can copy it by selecting this one and this one, Control L to link the modifiers, and you can see it's now changed. Just press G then Y and move that back. I'll probably want to make this quite lumpy and bumpy, so these need to be fairly thick to adapt to that. Now they look a little bit wide, so I might scale them in the X and move them across a bit. Just remember to apply the scale again, Control A and scale. You can scale in edit mode, and then your scale won't change here. We need a door handle and the skull. I quickly time lapse me making the door handle. It's just a cube and a torus and a cylinder. So just bring those in. I changed the polygon count of the torus, but you don't really need to do that. So don't worry too much. Uh, just add the different items and overlap them ready for sculpting. Oh, and I haven't cut my hole out. So let's go back to the door, select that, select these faces here and delete them. Select the faces at the back, delete those. Into edge mode with two, alt left click and alt left click to select these edge loops and control E to go to the edge menu or the edge menu up here. And you can bridge edge loops. And we can then join them together and we've got a hole in our doorway. Of course, we're only getting a base model for sculpting, so I'm not worried about making a very detailed skull model. So I'm just going to use simple shapes. So back into object mode, shift right click, shift A to add, and let's add an icosphere. Scale that down. Let's go to front view to actually match it up into wireframe mode and scale the top of the head there. Shift right click, Shift A to add, and add in a cube. Scale that down, and we just got the jaw there. And we can just keep it simple by doing a cube for the horns, so I'll just scale that down, rotate it, move it into position. I might just go into edit mode, right click and subdivide, and turn up the smoothness. That makes it a sort of ball shape, and give it a bit of a curve. That way I can go in and just start extruding these edges. So three to go to face mode and select all these faces at the end, E to extrude, E to extrude, rotate it round, E to extrude, scale it down as we got to get towards the end, E to extrude, G to grab and scale, and just edit the shape very slightly. I'll just copy and paste this to the other side. So shift D, scale X minus one, Rotate that round and just edit the shape slightly again. Okay, let's just see what that's looking like. A little bit of modification needed here, so I'll just scale that in the Y and bring that back. That should work fine when we join it all together. Let's go back to solid mode and see how it's all looking. That's great, but I feel like there's gonna to be two bigger gaps in here. So I'm going to edit the shape slightly. Back to wireframe, select these points. 
You can go into edit mode with a couple of objects as well if you need to by selecting them both and then going to, across to edit mode. So on the inside of the doorway, I'm going to have slightly less in terms of distortion and it's not looking too bad. A great base for sculpting. So in the next session, we'll talk about sculpting. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.